Good afternoon and welcome to the first episode of season two of Powered by You, a podcast produced by RBKC in collaboration with Morley Radio. My name is Zeno and I'm your host. Powered by You is a local podcast powered by young adults in the community discussing latest topics that impact their lives. In this episode, we'll be discussing the topic of self-love and the impact it can have on the quality of life. And most importantly, we'll be covering some points that would make you think about how to change things moving forward. I am joined with Tamika, who is a founder and managing director of an organization called Tremenko. Thank Hello, you for joining. Hello, Zeno. Thank you for coming. And I'm joined with Neve, who's a local member of the community. Hi, Zeno. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> How's things? Good, you know. I mean, I had a really good weekend. It was my birthday weekend. Oh, okay. Happy so, birthday. Thank Belated. you. Thank you. Happy thank birthday. You. <laughs> thank How you. did you spend it? Um, I was just out with my friends. With my people, you kept it casual. The time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Halloween weekend as well, so <laughs> okay, that's good convenient. Weekend, long weekend. Yeah, it was nice. A bit tired. <laughs> <laughs> little bit, little bit. A bit it's an it understatement. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's good. What about yourself, Tamika? How was your week so far? My week actually has been interesting, and um, it brings us to the point we're going to discuss today. And my week's been learning to. Give myself a little bit more self-love. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm, like, I'm liking that. I'm liking that. So before we move forward, I just want you to tell me a bit more about Tremenko um, because uh, that's how I introduced you. People might be wondering, thinking, what is Tremenko? What do you do? Um, so if you mind giving us a little just brief description. Okay. So I am the founder and managing director of Tremenko. Tremenko is a training, mentoring and coaching organisation and we help people and organisations going from a place where they feel stuck to becoming unstuck. And the birth or creation of Tremenko also came from an act of self-love. Ah, interesting, interesting. So uh, I'm I'm guessing you're doing a lot of work around... Uh, that topic self-affirmation and stuff like that well it's it's about personal development yeah. it's about understanding self it's about really engaging with who you are authentically mm. and not being afraid of that yeah and if if i'm not wrong you're currently a provider on the community leadership program right yes yes so um i'm currently facilitating a program that i wrote called becoming this is a personal development program for women really helping them step into Mm. who the person they want to become. Okay, right. So that's why I want to ask you about this whole self-love thing. It seems when you said women, I don't find men talking about it as much. Um, Mm. When I do engage with people, um, self-love tends to come more from females, but I could be mistaken. I could be just talking to a certain group that I haven't really heard of seen the full picture i uh, think you are mistaken yeah so that's why i'm thinking to myself what what is self-love what does it mean if you just break it down for me okay am i talking about the men or i'm talking about self-love in general self-love in general then we could, right. we, can, we, <laughs> could we could look at how it fits into okay. uh different... so um if i was going to break it down into the three a's right right mm-hmm. so self-love is about being aware aware of yourself Self-love is about acceptance of self and self-love is about appreciation of self. Mm. (laughs) So we can explore those further down the line, but the three A's. Okay, right. That sounds interesting. Um, (laughs) I don't know why guys don't talk about it as much, maybe from my experience, for me personally, in my opinion. Um, But I think that's the key. Men may not talk about it. Men do it. They just don't talk about doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. How, I think what that's what true. makes you think what makes you agree? I mean, personally, from the men in my life, like I see the way that they take time for themselves and for their friends and like guy time is, is guy time. Like there's no getting around. No it. Like, negotiating. If, no negotiating. If mm-hmm. I'm like to my brother, like, oh yeah, let's go to cinema, he's like, no, I'm going football with boys. Like it's <laughs> very, very simple that like guy time is guy time. And like mm. I just feel like they don't conceptualize it in the way that i would see self-love like right mm. so yeah i think they just do it in a very different way and like a very sort of that's interesting yeah. that is interesting to hear uh, but i would like to ask what is an example of self-love like uh like, would you say uh you've seen your brother for example what would you say he defines as self-love that you would think oh <laughs> um i, I think cannot... it is 
Yeah, yeah. So. I was just going to say, I think it's just like being with his friends and like doing the things that like he likes to do. Like he's really big on gaming. So like if it's a Friday evening, he's had a long day at school, like he's just going to get home. He's going to put his headphones on, like jump on like Twitch or whatever and just get onto it and just start doing what he needs to do. Right. You you was going to say something. No, um, I was absolutely going to agree. An yeah. example for, for male self-love could be video gaming. I'm not saying excessive use of video gaming, but what that is actually is they're practicing mindfulness, just being present. Yeah. Um, another example is working out, going to the mm. gym. Right. Yeah. That's what I was going to, that's what I was going to ask, you know, with, um, with self-love, are we talking about it from a, uh, physical perspective, mental perspective, spiritual perspective, like, or does it, does this even exist or are we looking, so I'm not too well versed with the self-love topic. That's why I'm here talking to, to both of you ladies, um, and just see what your perception is or how you would define it. Um, so for me, I, for me, if I was to just say what I think, I would say maybe it's three categories that maybe look at yourself and make changes physically and make changes as in like goal setting to improve your mental well-being. That's self-love, I would say. Uh, and spiritually depends of how you do how you do things, you know, taking time out, uh, appreciating nature, meditating, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, or, or depends um, or de depends what you normally do culturally as well. So, uh, yeah, is that right or am I mistaken? I don't know. I would definitely co-sign that. I think... Um, okay, um, that's, that's good news. Without, <laughs> without getting too deep, it is body, mind and spirit. So it's mm -hmm. about looking after your physical health, looking after your mental health and looking after your soul. What mm. really makes you happy? What's in your core? It's the trilogy and they all go together. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. That, I agree. I yeah, agree. Definitely. That's the thing, isn't it? But with these days, people might disagree. So, oh, you can't prove a soul exists because we can't see it. You know, so mm. st stuff like that. You get some people might say that. So it makes you think, oh, really? Like, uh, can I you see oxygen? Oh, I mean, mm, it depends. <laughs> <laughs> Condensation, <Sometimes. laughs> uh, like you know, with like with, with chemical reactions, it has to have oxygen oxygen within mm. to, to see a reaction happen. But I know what you mean. Like for example, you can't measure metaphysical stuff such as love, jealousy, mm. but you could see the physical impacts it has to heart rate or stuff like that. Okay, you know what I mean. So, yeah. Okay. So so there's so people, many things we cannot physically see, I agree. but we believe them to I be agree. there. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. And plus with mm. science, it's only finding discoveries yeah. mm. at the moment. You know, people did believe at one point the world was flat mm -hmm. and then uh, a lot of scientists did agree or co-sign it, as you would say. Mm -hmm. And and at one point they said, you know what? Further technology has advanced and we have discovered it's not flat. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So sometimes... Uh, you can't just assume you know everything because science says so. Science hasn't discovered a lot of things and theories keep on changing. Absolutely. So, so yeah, um, I do agree. Uh, the soul is a, a, an element within the trilogy, as you oh, said. Yeah, 100%. Like, I think it's all about, like, nurturing your soul as well. Like, like you were saying, like, making sure that you find those things that make you happy and feel fulfilled. And sometimes, I think sometimes for me, it's as easy as, like, I've had a bad week or a busy week and I've been like buying food when I'm at work or mm. like I'm just having like a quick something here. It's like, okay, cool. Like Sunday dinner, we're going to take our time. We're going to really enjoy it. Like fully do like a full meal. And then like, that's the thing that nourishes me like mentally. Cause it's like, okay, I've got my music on, I'm mm -hmm. chilling, I'm dancing, I'm cooking. Right. Like my soul feels fulfilled cause I'm doing something that I like. And then physically as well, like I've got some good food. So like, okay, doesn't right. really, doesn't that. really go wrong, does I it? I love that. <laughs> that's true, that's true. So, so that's your way of yeah, yeah, yeah. But what I'm, in, I'm of interested to see. Okay, <laughs> I'm, in, I'm interested to see what you would do for yourself as self-love. Um, well, I've is had, it similar? Yeah, I mean, that's one act of self-love. I've had um, a journey. Mm -hmm. I'm let's say I'm more mature than some of you guys <laughs> a little bit more experienced so for me um I've learned to protect my energy and my space so self-love is about knowing and recognizing that environments or people that aren't healthy for me mm. and to remove myself for those situations mm. self-love is also learning to say no Oh, yeah, tell them, please. <laughs> so um, I remember when I was younger, and even, you know, it pops up still today where 
I might be presented with a situation or I might get invited somewhere. I don't want to go. But the other person is persuading me to go because it's what they want to do or what they need to do and not really standing firm in my own convictions mm -hmm. and being okay with no, it's a no. So um, learning to say no is definitely an act of self-love for me. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Saying no is challenging, especially if you're given to peer pressure mm -hmm. easily. You know, um, it depends. Peer pressure... Um, it all it all you know comes down to the environment that you're brought up into mm -hmm. uh your belief in yourself as mm -hmm. well uh if you're agreeable or not mm -hmm. um all these things contribute i suppose mm. um and then it's all about like putting up your boundaries as well. That's like right. that's that's yeah, what it is with the yeah. saying no. And I think if that's you right. like as they say, if you don't stand for anything, you fall for anything. Fall for everything. Oh, for I everything. Like that. Yeah. Right. Is it, yeah. If you don't stand for something, you fall, fall for, for everything. everything. Right. Yeah. That's I it. should have brought a notebook with me today. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> it's it's a famous saying. It's a famous yeah. I've heard it quite before, mm. and it's true. Like if you don't have moral values, for mm. example, or you don't have boundaries, or you know, that's a no, I'm not doing that. And it's non-negotiable. It's not. It's not that you're not agreeable. It's just you know what you want for yourself. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and people do make you think. Oh, you're just being selfish, or not. It depends. So that's why they try to guilt trip you into not self love, not, not into loving yourself. But can you recognise it's about them and what they want? Yeah. yeah. And not about yeah, what you exactly. want. Exactly. I agree. But sometimes mm. I understand that us as individuals, we're not perfect, and there's always self there's always room for self-improvement. So mm -hmm. maybe when someone's telling you to change, you've got to look at what they're asking. And if it's something like advice, which will help you grow, mm -hmm. then maybe look at it from, okay, this is advice. It might help me. But if it's something damaging to your uh, character mm -hmm. or something that's going to harm you, that is not an act of self-love. Like, like we say, parents, when they're shaping their children, they're telling them what to do and how to mm -hmm. do it. Surely parents have this connection, innate connection with their, with their children. They're not going to tell them to do something that's bad in most cases. Well, but well, mm, I what would like, you say? Mm, I think, all right, let's, if you think about it, right, we show up because of our programming, right? Yeah. So mm -hmm. if you, every day you're, you're told you're not this, you're terrible, you're rubbish, you're blah, 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 blah. After a while, you're going to believe that. Mm. And when you believe, when it becomes a, a belief, it turns into a behavior, a complete lack of love for self because of the programming. Right, mm -hmm. okay. Now, mm. let me drill down a little bit further. Right. We have approximately 60 to 80,000 thoughts every day that go for our thinking. And 90% of those are negative. So that we do a lot of negative thinking. You should be doing this. You're not good enough. You, you can't do it. Mm. And all of that comes in some way from our programming. Right. Mm. So self-love, really, going back to a point you were saying about taking advice from others, we have to be very careful mm -hmm. because we know what's best for us. There are some people that can help along the journey, but ultimately mm. we instinctively know what's best mm -hmm. and yeah. i think i think yeah. that's kind of something to touch on as well that like you have all of these opinions around you and a lot of good intentions as well like people mm. your friends your family your colleagues like whoever it is in your circle have these good intentions for you but at the end of the day like you were saying to me like they're not in my head and like mm. i don't really know like what works for you, that's great. Like that works for you, but it doesn't actually translate into my life. Mm -hmm. And I think something with the parents as well, kind of to flip it, like they can say to a lot of children, like, oh, you're not good enough. You need to do better. Da, da, da. But then in the same time, you also have parents who were like, oh, you're doing so well. Like I, at school, like I did really well. And like, they were like, oh, you're doing amazing. Like keep it up. Like this is so good. Da, da, da. Right. And then I had this pressure and I was mm. like, Oh, like mm. when I like the first time like I failed an exam, I like had a massive breakdown because mm. I was like, I've never experienced this before. And I feel like I've just let everybody down. Like mm. nobody told me that it was OK to make mistakes because I didn't make mistakes early enough. Mm. And then right. like that's been a massive part of my self-love mm. journey to like imposter syndrome mm. and like knowing that if I miss a deadline or like I make a mistake that yeah. like. Like, like life happens mm. and like I just actually have to keep moving forward from it of yeah. course I love that name it's, I mean what you just said so <laughs> so true this incredible pressure mm. 
that we put on ourselves, but it it didn't originate from us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's programming. Like it's programming, then we internalise it and then beat ourselves up. Yeah. That's the thing. Do you think you'd have control over who programs you? No. Exactly. So <laughs> so so do you think it's a responsibility of self love to lo- to to uh position yourself in a in a specific environment that you know is healthy for you? You have to recognize this yeah. is that this is where awareness comes in, right? Mm. So your body is going to tell you if you're not in the right environment yeah. because you're going to feel uncomfortable. That is true. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. You know it. You can walk into a place and it just doesn't feel mm. right. Yeah. You can't mm. put your finger on it. It's a gut instinct. Yeah. yeah. You just yeah. get, you know, as you young people Uneasy. see, the ick. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> no. We, you know what? I think, I think the ick is, the guys don't say that I got the ick. I think I think it's yes, more. Yes, they do. No, they don't. Yes, they do. How? Yes, the they guy, do. I don't know which. Okay, maybe maybe your circle of friends. Yeah, definitely. Really? Like there okay. have been times where. Because all I know, <laughs> uh, all we've seen on social media, if a guy does this, the girl gets the ick. Yeah. You know, yeah, but if like... he wears a rucksack, she gets the ick. <laughs> yeah. If he's got a power bank, he gets <laughs> the. She gets. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm thinking, what if he breathes? But there are, yeah, there are like, <laughs> like flip it, and there are definitely so I things. The, I, like... I don't think I've come across a guy that says, "Oh, she gave me the ick." Oh. But you don't have an example yourself where you've you've been in a situation you've just like, <laughs> <laughs> no, I just like, oh, you know, just I'm, I'm not Why feeling it. I'm, I'll be, I'm just not feeling it. The ick. They gave but the I wouldn't ick. use the word ick. Oh, see, you know, you're being long. Like you know, you know. I'm you just the keeping ick. it real with you. <laughs> like, okay, maybe you've heard it in your in your environment. But yeah, so yeah, sorry, we, we diverted or transgressed. <laughs> um, you were saying. I forgot. When we, get, we, were, when we come but into in, a place. in a situation where yeah. you right. feel just so, uncomfortable. So yeah. uncomfortable. But even, you can even, like Neve just gave the example of um, being an overachiever, right? Yeah. yeah. So you can go to school. Overachieving might be easy to you because you just do it. But you may not be interested in, in any type of academic stu- study mm. because you're a creative. Yeah. But... Because you're good at it and because everybody's kind of g- giving you, you know, praise and admiration, it still doesn't feel quite comfortable. You mm-hmm. know, it's not sparking your joy. You're mm-hmm. just doing it because you've been programmed to believe that this is the path to take. Yeah. And our parents' programming is different to ours and our program will be different to the generation after us. Yeah. So they they may be from the understanding that you get a good education, you get a good job and you live your life. We're in a different world. Exactly. There's no job for life anymore. Yeah. So tap into what sparks your joy and really understand what makes you feel uncomfortable. Mm. And I think kind of like with tapping into what sparks your joy as well, like sometimes that in itself is a massive like self-discovery journey mm. where like, when I was younger, it would be reading. And now, like, I still enjoy reading, but now it's just, like, I'm, I'm going to read on the train. Like, it's just sort of something to get me there. But now, like, that joy that I find is in sort of taking it a step further and it's writing and it's exploring themes and it's doing something different. And, like, sometimes it's really easy to think, like, I grew up, like, playing football and now don't ever put a ball in front of me. I <laughs> cannot stand it. Like, I absolutely hate it. And, like, that used to be, like, a massive, massive, like, element of happiness for me now. And now I think, like, it's changed so much as I get older. And, like, that's just, like, continuous journey of, like, knowing that, you know, a new job, a new circle, a new home, like, a new interest is always going to come into your life and just sort of appreciating that and continuing on from that. And I mm-hmm. think it's it's difficult, but it's, it's something that can be done. Right. Okay, that's interesting. Programming. Um, yeah, with London, I think a lot of people say they feel it's very busy and it's they don't feel at ease, especially when they go, you know, day in, day out, just working, sleep, repeat, work, sleep, repeat, very fast paced. And mm. they feel like they're, they're very unsettled and they don't enjoy that quality of life. Even though people would argue if you've got money, London could be amazing, you know, mm. so, you know, you could enjoy the best, best luxuries in life. Mm. Um, but then again, if you're just a normal person who has a normal job, Traveling on the tube day in day out, um, it can be a bit. It's draining. Uh, no. It's draining. Yeah, yeah it, it is it, draining. draining. No emotion, especially yeah. when people say you go up north, people start smiling at you. <laughs> the minute you're in London, everyone, if you smile at someone like, do I know you? Or why are you, smile, why are you looking at me for? I don't know. I've had an experience like that when when yeah. I went just 
I think Birmingham, just not even that far. Oh, and, they're happy up there. And there's a smiling, <laughs> I'm like, oh, it feels like I know you, but I don't. So I think that's the norm for them mm. to greet each other, even though they don't know you. But in London, so money orientated, um, you're there to get your paycheck. Um, it's very, very fast paced, like we said. Mm. Cost of living's high, all these things. So you start to question yourself, is my quality of life that great or could it be better? I think you're looking on everything outside. And I could argue the same thing in Paris, mm. in Barcelona. The environment, yes, is important because you need a fertile environment. Mm. And, and you're right, London is a highly stressful environment. It's very fast paced. But there are pockets of London. There are so much things to do that can really mm. help spark your joy. Mm -hmm. mm. So this week... Um, I went for a walk in Holland Park. Mm. Right, now, nice. Holland Park has been on my doorstep my, pretty much my whole life. And I can tell you, I haven't been that many times. Yeah. I take a walk in Holland Park and I'm away from the craziness, but in the middle of it, in yeah. a way. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But just being out in nature and watching nature and seeing nature really helped me just take it all in and be thankful mm. that... We live in a city where we have access to all of this pure, yeah. unadulterated na nature. Mm. But also, not only that, there's so much free things to do in London. That's what I was going to say. Like, <laughs> I mean... <laughs> I mean... <laughs> that yeah. comes from the heart. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. Like, it's true, and I don't, yeah. I don't think mm. we realise it. So, mm. like... There's a website called Our City, right? And it's full of like free things for under 25s to do in KNC and in Westminster. And it's things like that that are run like by voluntary groups and like by your community, for your community that like, because you don't see it here, there and everywhere. And mm. like, it's not popping up on your socials all the time. Like you don't think it's there, but these are literally things that around the corner from Morley or around the corner from Ladbroke Grove or like down in Earl's Court. Like they're literally everywhere. And then these are the pockets where you're finding your joy. Like you've got a drama group or you've got boxing or you're just meeting new people. Or you're doing something you enjoy and like things are free. You've got the, like, the Natural History Museum. It's like yeah. 10 minutes down the road. And like nobody goes there. There's a design museum, there's a science museum. There are all these cool fun things to do. I'm going to give another example, right? Mm -hmm. So for two days at the end of August, every year, not only does the community, mm. the lab, the community within Labrick Grove and the surrounding areas, but people around London and the people who come across the country, they come to the Notting Hill Carnival, right? Mm. For two days, people are smiling. For two days, people are yeah. enjoying themselves. For two days, people are dancing. Now, has their life changed in any way? No. They, why are they happy? Because they're letting go. They're yeah. choosing not to focus on whatever life is for them in the moment. That is true. They're yeah. just mm. present and enjoying themselves. So my question is, like you said, for those two days, they enjoyed themselves. They, they got away from reality and it didn't change much after that. So would this be a temporary fix rather than a long term fix? So what would be a long term solution to achieve that self peace or f solve your problems that you're experiencing um, in your life, for example. Well, I'm going to ask you, what what changed in the two days? Uh, what, what do you mean? What changed in the two right, days? So you're saying, is the carnival a temporary fix? The question or is... Or any, any other right, event. Is it, the, but mm. what is going on during that time? Whilst they're at carnival, what's mm. going on? It depends. It dep okay, so I can give you a proper uh, answer as to to explore all the possibilities that what happens in carnival no because <laughs> that, that's so, different for everyone so, so people but everyone reality through various things everyone's doing know? the same thing right yeah and what do to you an think extent, that yes. thing is just enjoying they're just, present yeah. right so yeah, they're present yeah. they're not thinking about their bills they're not thinking about work <laughs> they're not thinking about they're just present in the moment so it's not carnival it's the fact that they're being present. Yeah. But kind of, but because of bills and cost of living and this mm -hmm. uh, awful government that we have at the moment that's just taken... No, no, no. It's chaos. It's actually chaos, okay? All respect, but it's chaos. <laughs> okay. Like, this is causing a lot of stress to people and it's kind of like... 
things like that. How how do you sort of step away from? You know, you have to watch the news because you've got to see what the weather's like. Why do or... you have to watch the news? The news is the worst thing you can do to yourself. <laughs> but what happens when you want to when you want to stay informed? Like, but say you you've can... got an interest in like current affairs and politics, and you really want to stay informed, but there's it gets to a point where that's on your mind all the time. And how do you balance like being present but also being engaged? Right. So the thing about the news is you're only going to get the perspective of whatever the media source is at mm. the time, right? So if you really want to become enlightened, you need to dig a little bit deeper and go for kind of, you know, more objective and subjective sources and fact check your sources. Mm -hmm. So much information is being spread mm. and people don't even question it. So my, my, my response is we have just lived through a pandemic and people assume that they weren't going to be able to survive that. Mm. Now we've gone into, we're, we're literally about to go into a recession. So it's not what's happening that is the issue. It's how we respond to what's happening that is the issue. Yeah, yeah. And, and you're saying about, you know, um, keeping informed and uh, having to be up to date mm -hmm. with current affairs. But then obviously Tamika said, you know what, you've got to see if it's, if it's currently valid what mm. you're watching and you've got to dig a bit deeper. And also I think it's about not blind following to a certain extent because whatever's put in front of you, like like you said, if you don't fact check it, you might be mm. just just following what someone said and not really you're not content with that yourself, if yeah, you know what yeah, I mean. Yeah. You just because it's on the on uh, the media or mm -hmm. just any other platform mm -hmm. it's like you might as well just say I took this from Instagram and I believe it to be true mm -hmm. you know it, sort of thing absolutely um, People, you know there's you so use much your logic sometimes. Yeah, yeah. there's so much false information and what a lot of the information does is it creates fear so I know yeah. several people who have become agoraphobic. They cannot leave their home at the moment because during the pandemic, they were glued to the TV. That fear seeped in. And now they believe that if they step out of their house, they're going to die. Mm. Because they would not. Mm. Their focus was on the negative yeah. instead of... I can breathe. They, I can yeah. get out of bed. Mm. They might say, you know what? I think that's a form of self-love, not stepping outside because I might catch the virus. So I'm looking out for myself, for example. And they might not catch the virus. Yeah, there's always a possibility. <laughs> I think in life there's possibility for Either everything. Either way, right? Either way. So why would we constantly... Uh, going against self-love is constantly assuming that yeah. something negative is going to happen. Mm -hmm. so, so, yeah, I get you. So what is the difference between self-love and self-obsession right someone who self-obsess someone who loves themselves genuinely loves themselves but they also love others mm -hmm. someone who self-obsess loves themselves only 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 yeah and they mm. lack appreciation or understanding for others mm -hmm. they're very black and white this is it this is how it is and they're very it's all about me it's about me. Someone who's who's a bit self incest they're the type of people who believe that they're the only ones that have a birthday every year. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right, okay. yeah. Do you know what I mean by that? The world like, revolves yeah, yeah, around yeah. them. And like, yeah. oh, my God, it's my yeah. day. And, you know, the world has to stop yeah. because yeah. it's my day. <laughs> Was that you last week? <laughs> Was that you last week? Yeah. I'm thinking, but, like, do you feel like sometimes a bit of self-obsession is like needed like because I, I will we'll allow it on like, your day yeah, we'll, like, we'll, we'll, you, like, you like can be obsessed times, with yeah. yourself on your day well, well, but that's yeah. about it but there are times where I'm like uh, like I did this like I yeah. did this and I need people to appreciate me but like I heard, this is what's just happened yeah but I heard some people saying alright birthday is a, is a day but then they say it's a birthday week I'm a birthday week kind of person well, come on <laughs> now now could you justify a whole week or, or, or is a day just enough a day, of course a day's enough, but like Before I Before you know it. <laughs> personally, like yeah. the way I see it mm -hmm. is like, you know, my birthday's on this same day every year, but like people have lives, you're busy, you got school, you got work, you got families, whatever. So like it might be like, oh okay, like I see my grandparents on this day and then like I'll see my cousins and then I'll see my friends and then we'll do like a work thing and then before we know it we've done seven days of celebrations and I'm not mad at it like I had a great time and if you make it you make it I, but I don't think that's self-obsession I think that's celebration yeah. and yeah. I think that's just celebrating with different groups of people yeah. so yeah but I like, like with, the, with the self-obsession that's mm. kind of like 
I wouldn't I wouldn't say like I'm self obsessed, but I feel like I'm I'm I've worked really hard to be able to like big myself up. Like before I would just kind of be like really modest about my achievements and now it's kind of like, no, actually like what I've just done is like a really, really big thing and like I need to be proud of that. And yeah. then kind of like making sure that, you know, not making sure that other people appreciate me, but just kind of saying that like yeah, this was a this was a good thing, and we should be proud of this. And again, I think that's that's an act of self love. Mm. You know, giving yourself you know a pat on the back, saying I did that. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. I think that's amazing. Yeah, I just got a, I got a question when you said someone who's self obsessed would not be agreeable, and it's either this or that, pretty black, mm. pretty much black or white. Um, mm. But then prior to the beginning of our conversation, mm. we said self love is being able to stand up for yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, so where could someone misunderstand? the difference Mm -hmm. between self-love and self-obsession because I could potentially say I've worked so hard I can't afford to lose what I've worked for Mm -hmm. and that's me saying it's black or white Mm -hmm. that or that but that's that's, yeah that's about you personally and that's just you're owning that but you're not also putting someone else down you're not saying right this is it for me but this is it for you and you're not good enough because blah 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 there's a difference between loving yourself but then I think people that are self-obsessed, they love themselves, but they love themselves at the detriment of others. Okay. So they might get their own val- self-confidence or val- validity by putting other people down. Right, okay, I, yeah? get, I get you, yeah. Mm. Um, and we can, we can agree to disagree, and mm. that's okay, but someone as self-obsessed will tell you outright, you're 100% wrong and I'm 100% right. Mm. Not understanding that, we're all looking at the same thing, but we all see something different. Mm. Our, our experience of life is based on our environment, our upbringing, our culture. So we all could be looking at this bottle of water, but we're all seeing something completely different. Some of you might look at the bottle, some will be looking at the water, some of you will be looking at the cap. But what we do is we see different things and then we argue with each other saying, well, no, that's yeah, not yeah. that's not there. <laughs> <laughs> Someone who's self-obsessed will tell you what you're seeing isn't what you're seeing because what they're seeing is more important. Okay. Does That describes the world we live in, though. Absolutely. No? Yeah. Don't mm-hmm. you think? Yeah, yes, yeah. yeah. We're told what, should we, what we should do and yeah. how it should be yeah. and what you can't do, what you can exactly. do. Exactly, yeah. So if you do dare to step out of line, you become the weirdo or you become the one who's just a bit... He's a bit <clears throat> Or she's a bit not mm, right, mm, you know, mm. because you think different or, you know, you don't agree with the generic agenda. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I think, I think, I don't know, do you think the West is different? Now I'm thinking compared to other parts of the world. Different how? Yeah. Like everyone just follows suits automatically, just straight away. What, in the West? Yeah, like, like things just, um, a trend happens and everyone has to follow sort of thing. Um, and if you don't, you become alienated. Well, is that right or is that a fallacy? Because the reason... It depends reason, on lived experience. Yeah it, yeah, it does depend on lived I think in the East, um, well, you could say the same, but instead of it being about trends, it, it could be about culture. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, let's say for in Japan, they have a very, very strict culture, especially when it comes to things like crime. So if you commit a crime... It's not only shame on you, it's shame on your whole family. Mm. Yeah. Your family could become outcasts. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, mm. so, so people do follow suit. Because I think, mm. basically, we we are, by nature, animals, right? And we, we gather in yeah, packs, yeah, yeah. yeah? And what that pack does is it protects us. So we might be in peer groups because together, collectively, we are... Um, we are protected by that peer group and we might follow suit because if we get out of that pack, the protection goes. That's what I was going to say. We become vulnerable. Yeah, like I think, I don't think I have enough experience of other cultures to say if it's just a Western thing or if it's just Mm. a British thing. I don't think I've got that lived experience. But what I do think and from what I've seen like on like the news or the media or social media or whatever is that like just as humans like we just want to be together like you just want to fit in you want to mm. have your tribe and you just want to mm. be with them and if that's something as simple as everyone's today we're all wearing air forces or make sure your air forces aren't creased or the next day it's making sure that we're all accepting of this like social issue or we're all against this social issue like i think it's simple things like that that 
band people together. So I think it's not just like an East or West thing or, you know, North, South or wherever. I think just globally, we've all sort of got a, a tendency to sort of follow trends and, and group together and find something that makes us feel accepted, really. Yeah, yeah. Because you're, you're saying that, but I think program as well, programming yeah. plays a big part as well. Yeah, uh, people do look to America as this fantastic place. <laughs> uh, but then you get there, you're thinking crime rate is high. Yeah. This is happening. Homelessness is a big thing. Yeah, but it yeah. depends what you paint on the TV screen that makes you think, oh, I want to get there. What do you call it? The dream? The dream? The American dream. The American dream. The American dream. And then they get there like, oh, no, no, yeah. it's not the dream. That was literally like my first yeah. experience. I went to like Times Square and it's always like this massive, like it, like insane. It's, you, start, you sort of think of it like Piccadilly Circus and Leicester Square and you get there and it's just like one tiny little road with like a few screens. And I was like, oh, <laughs> was like, that that's it? it. You got bumped. Like Statue of Liberty <laughs> was tiny. Yeah, literally. <laughs> I, was, I was fuming. Like Statue of Liberty was tiny. I was like, they sold this dream so, so incredibly and I felt heavy over heels of it that's the power of programming <laughs> so yeah you got bumped you went to I the states you went to the states bumped. and you thought this isn't the yeah america sold you saw a dream, on, like, on tv to a different level but yeah with programming i think like we're just saying a second ago that it's, it starts from a young young age uh even was it from birth you said to mm -hmm. me, yeah so i think do you think a parent has control over how their child is programmed in terms of they're spending eight hours in school and then out with the fr <coughs> friends, socialising? No, um, I think it's difficult. I think parents like to think they're in control. But they're not. But the minute they had, the minute that child goes out in the world, even a baby in a buggy, right? They're observing. Mm -hmm. They're going to observe something and that observation could become a memory or it could become a belief. So, for example, I don't know, um, they might see a, a man that they, at the time, deem as scary. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And they have this memory of this scary mm. man. Yeah. So then yeah. whenever they see men that represent mm. that, they're scared. These men are harmless. They haven't done anything. To, mm. Nothing's happened to them, but they're yeah. just responding to a memory. Okay, that makes sense. So, so if we were to leave programming aside and, mm. and leave babies to grow with just their innate disposition and things mm -hmm. how would they shape up to be because is 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 is, is moral values with stemmed within well i think what we're going into is the nature nurture debate aren't we and it's a right. really interesting debate but, and yeah. i find it fascinating because um often there's studies right so um i was watching the tv program recently and there was these twin girls who'd been separated at birth they're now in their 30s they come from i think it was um uh china mm -hmm. and they were both adopted to different american families now these women had no contact with each other after like three months but they are identical twins they do a genealogy test and they find each other and then when they get together, their lives are literally like parallel. Really? Their husbands even have the same name. <laughs> oh, that's weird. They're studying <laughs> the same things. They're studying the same things at school, like the same activities. Their favorite food is the same food. So to me, what that said is their innate being came through. The mm. the, didn't matter about the environment that they were being raised in. Two mm. completely, like, completely other sides of the, the country. Yeah. But their innate mm. being came through. So sometimes the innate being comes through and sometimes the environment... Overpowers. Overpowers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I agree with that. Especially yeah. if the environment isn't fertile. So I was thinking, when I knew I was coming here, I was thinking about my, my life and acts mm -hmm. of self-love and where I felt love... And when I was in primary school, I felt love. I was my most authentic self. I was happy. And then I went into secondary school and I had the exact opposite experience. Mm -hmm. I hated every moment of it. And I thought, well, what's the difference? And the difference was the two environment. One was an environment of love and the other one was an environment of conflict, of insecurity, mm -hmm. of different groups just not knowing how to get on. Mm -hmm. And I was uncomfortable in the second environment. Mm, okay. Mm. Yeah. That, so it depends on how you place yourself then. And, just, and the, I think the most important thing is acknowledging that 
you're not happy in a certain situation mm-hmm. or or sometimes you choose to ignore that like, like they say ignoring the red flags yeah, but yeah. i think there's danger I, I, or they think oh it looks like it's carnival <laughs> or they, they see all these red flags happening and um but i think the danger with yeah. that is you go in an environment and you don't feel comfortable and let's just say everybody else does what happens then you then internalize it like there's something wrong with you. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think sometimes you have to be in uncomfortable environments. That's what I was like, say. There's, yeah. Without a shadow of a doubt, like I couldn't be doing the things that I'm doing today without, for example, like I've sat in so many rooms where I've gone in there and I'm like, I'm the only black person. I'm like, I am the only black person in this room. I am the only woman in this room. And like, it's, it's in those moments where before... I wouldn't really know how to like get my point across or I'd be afraid that I would come across as angry or needy or I'd just be talking rubbish. And now that like, yeah, I'm uncomfortable, but now I know how to deal with it and I know how to make myself comfortable to the point where like, I'm going to be, I'm going to be uncomfortable in this room anyway. Cause I'm, I'm, I feel like a token, but I'm here and I'm able to talk and I'm able to express what I need to do to a point where I've achieved my goals now. So like, it doesn't matter like who says what, or if I'm, mm. I'm only here for like a diversity pick, like I've done what I need to do. Not to say that this is what I'm experiencing in my, in my current situation. How are you feeling now? All. How are you well, feeling now? In this room? Yeah, right now. I'm loving it. Yeah. I'm loving it. Like That's there good. are people of, of all shapes, all colors, like everything here to like make us all feel comfortable. And this is the world that we live in. So I don't understand why you go into certain situations and it's full of like old white men, for example, like in uni, I would like, go to like a like certain meetings and I'd be like oh like <laughs> nobody sounds like me like mm. you you lot are all from like Bath yeah, and Cambridge yeah. and Oxford and I'm like yo what's you, everyone saying have it you seen weird. yourself like um since you put yourself in these environments mm. have you seen yourself maybe change the way you talk sometimes without you realizing oh yeah yeah yeah, 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 happens, yeah. right yeah 100% yeah. but like I think now I've sort of I've taken it I've now I've realized that you go in and, and you speak like, oh, hi, how is everybody? You start Nice to meet tone. you. Da, 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 da. And I'm like, that's not me. Like, I talk like this. Like, I don't always, like, I, I say don't. Like, I don't say I do not do that. Like, I, I talk like this. And I'm from, like, originally from South London. So this is my voice and this is how I'm going to talk. So why do I need to, like, come and change it to make other people feel comfortable? Well, I, okay. So can I just say that? Go on. What's happening there is that it's called code switching. Yeah. And it's just... Choosing a different language or a different tone depending on your audience, right? So, for example, if I'm at home and I'm around my people, people, mm. my the language that I use or the tones that I use, maybe you guys won't understand. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not. I'm not changing necessarily changing who I am. I'm just using a different type of language based on my audience. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Mm, yeah. I okay. Mean, I'm kind of in two ways because I get it. Like there are definitely times where I know that I can't say certain things because it's gonna like, it's not the situation for it. And like, it doesn't call for it at all. But simple things like my current accent, I shouldn't have to change that because I'm in in a room with somebody else. And like, those were things that I was changing. Obviously, like when I'm at home, I'm a, I might talk in patois, I might talk in sang or whatever. And like when I'm at work, like I won't sort of free those, like use those ranges yeah. so freely. I guess with that, I think it's good with, with code switching. Um, as long as you know how to revert back to your to your primary self mm. and not getting lost as in losing yourself. Uh, I think that's when you fall into trouble when you... I would say sell your identity mm. you know you lose who you are oh yeah I definitely you know? understand that and I, people do happen to yeah, become like that it, because yes. of people pleasing yes and I don't agree with people pleasing at all mm. uh, you, you for a bit of change you sell yourself <laughs> yeah, yeah you know yeah, yeah. Um, people start looking at you thinking you're not the same person even when mm. you go home you're not the same person but often yeah. and this again where the self love comes in often the need or the feel that I'm not going to change isn't coming from the other people. It's coming within yourself. It's coming Mm -hmm. from in myself because I think, Neve, what you were talking about is, which is really familiar is, is about being in environments that you're not comfortable being in. Yeah. And those environments may not necessarily be negative environments. They're just new or Mm. I'm not used to being the only black female at at this table. Mm. So then sometimes what we do is like we get, well, actually, I'm not going to change, but no one's asked us to change. 
No one has said, mm, okay. I don't like how you speak. Or, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. no, no. Okay, <laughs> let, let me say something. They're not going to say it because the policies don't, don't allow you. Mm. They can't tell you on but, paper, I don't want you to yeah. do this, but behavior, it's body language. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's, okay. It's that they, external mentally, feeling. Yeah. Mentally, it's not mental manipulation. Well, it can be. It depends how you would look at it. But if you see everyone acting a certain way, you're going to think, I'm the odd one out. Then yeah. you're going to think, I've got to change. But they don't have to tell you to change. But where's that thought coming from? Who's it coming it's from? It's the environment you're in. No, you've yeah. chosen that thought yeah. based on but the you're, environment you're in you're, you're in. you're against the wall. How is your back against the wall? It depends on on uh, on your personal situation. If you feel like, you know what, I'm not going to get far in this job because but, I'm the odd one out. I don't talk like them. You're I'm not talking gonna last about, it. you said, if you feel... If you think, yeah. you haven't said what the other person has done or the other person has said. It's all about how you see yourself in that situation. That's true. And then you behave accordingly. But I, I but feel like sometimes it's a lot of subtleties like from those people. So it's, it's simple things like... It's simple things like you're speaking and someone speaks over you and you're kind of like, oh, like they didn't actually do anything to me but you've just cut me off like point blank period. stuff like that yeah and like it's those little things where that make you feel like a bit uncomfortable and then those they plant those seeds of doubt like oh should i be here should i yeah, not am i yeah, saying yeah. the right things like do i need to change anything yeah i stuff like that for example yeah like you said that's a good example or maybe if you're new to a team or a workplace and they're all smokers and you're the only one who doesn't smoke <laughs> and they're all going out socializing and you say oh come with us and you're like i don't really smoke yeah and they're like, oh, all right cool and then they make you feel like, oh, you know what? This person's weird or odd. Mm. He's not socialising because the social... Drinking, the social a, drinking focus, as well. Drinking that yeah. a big one. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. the social yeah. focus is going to the yeah. pub. And yeah. it's, it's, it's British culture. Yeah, yeah, going, yeah. What if you're like, I don't, I don't really feel that, you know? And then it's, like, it's seven billion yeah. questions. Why don't you drink? Are you not a drinker? Is yeah. it your religion? Is it your upbringing? It called, like, I just, it's I just called, don't drink. It's called sober shaming, yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah, sober yeah. shaming. But that's a great example of an act of self-love. And and I remember used to be a teacher and we every friday all of the teachers would go to the pub and remember um it's not really part of my culture to be out drinking like mm -hmm. that to the extent where they're out all night and the money that was being spent i was just shocked at you know <laughs> the continue you know like mm. they, they might buy four rounds in in an evening and each round is 50 quid yeah. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. But the act of self-love is being okay with, I'm all right, you know, I'm going to yeah, go yeah, home yeah. and watch whatever. Yeah. <laughs> strictly yeah. so. Uh, yeah, strictly <laughs> so. I'm, I'm cool. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm cool. Yeah. And and learning to be like, I'm cool. That's yeah, the thing. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Because mm. you know what? You can either look at it as a financial element, like, you know what? I'm, I'm not looking to spend that much money. Mm -hmm. Or you're looking at, you know what? I don't want to intoxicate myself or mm -hmm. I don't want to be vulnerable because that's what happens. When, once you get... Once you start drinking, your 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 sensitivity to, to things become mm -hmm. numbed down, and and of you start course. making stupid decisions or maybe things you, that you would not normally do. You yeah, do yeah, yeah. Um, so th th there's a lot of mental consequence, and then your fi your organs as well take a beating as well. Mm. So yeah. so it depends what kind of self love you're looking at. Mm -hmm. So so with smoking, people say, oh, it stresses me. Um, not to smoke. For example, mm -hmm. if I was to be stressed at work, a five-minute break would it's help me. Yeah. But then again, you got to look at what, at what cost does that at come at? Yeah. You're, you're poisoning your lungs. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're, you're going to get increased uh, chance of developing mm -hmm. cardiovascular disease. Mm -hmm. um, all these your, your skin ages, mm -hmm. um, your teeth become a certain colour, your fingernails, mm -hmm. all these all things, of, yeah. just because work stressed to you and you need that five minute break which yeah. becomes a habit also financially yeah. you're paying to an and addiction then, yeah that, yeah and then i think it's all up to us to find these like alternatives yeah oh to yeah things there's... like it's really i think especially in in britain as well like sort of smoking and drinking is very much it's like the easy stress reliever yeah, it's just yeah. like do you know what i'll have a glass of wine you know i have a pint i'll go for a cigarette mm -hmm. but i think me myself like i think my way of trying to get out of those habits because like like I, I do indulge in them I think it's sometimes it's just like oh do you know what? I'm just gonna go for a walk like That's just it. go for a walk like because the obvious thing that I need to do is clear my head you gotta like, clear your mind a hundred percent I think with that it's just um knowing what options you have yeah and i think if you're limited to options you'll be like oh that's the easiest option to go through um and also just like thinking with with all these things it's um it's money making mm. but you know there's there's a chance of being addicted to things and no one goes in thinking it's only going to be one cigarette i won't do it again it becomes 
a chain of action. Mm. Um, same as drinking. No one goes in thinking, mm. I'm only going to have one glass. I don't want to become an alcoholic. No one says that. But then it becomes, uh, if it opens the possibilities to you becoming an, uh, an alcoholic. Uh, but also I think with young people, maybe or other people that they, may, they might decide to partake in these activities to uh, escape their responsibilities for that mm -hmm. time being, not to deal with them head on. Yeah, definitely. I, feel, I feel like if you've got responsibilities or issues, the key is to work on solving them rather than neglecting them and then they'll arise back up mm -hmm. and then you're going to end up being in a cycle. And again I think and kind again. of with yeah. that, it's just making sure that we give young people the resources they need to do this. Because it's, it's, it's really easy the, to just go into the corner shop and pick up a vape and just be like, that's but let me tell you. But today. let me tell you this, with vapes, they're all branded in a certain way to, to look delicious and mm. eye-catching these colors you got you get uh these uh fruit watermelon, flavors watermelon berries, apples, slushy cherries, yeah blah, blah, blah. same as same as um cigarettes it may it, at one point it was a cool thing to do mm. if you're smoking you're part of the cool group or if you're drinking let's say advertising every advert that revolves around drinking is parties having a good time creating memories but then how come cigarettes is not allowed branding but alcohol is mm -hmm. so all these things you got a question what you see on tv you got to break it down and question things. Don't be afraid to be like, oh, I'm, am I being too mm. over analytic here? You, like, like how and that's part of the self-love journey as yeah, well. Yeah, like yeah. Finding out what yeah, it means yeah. to you. Like when, you're, when, you're, yeah. when you're doing this, like, oh, why, why is it today that like I need to act this certain way? And that's kind of why I want to bring it back to like giving resources to younger people and like yeah. making sure that it's not just like an, like an easy fix. Like they see their parents have have resorted to this way so they yeah. go on to it it's kind yeah. of like making sure that you know they have organizations like tremenko and they've got like access to sort of resources that can help them and support systems and charities that are like are there yeah. to actually make sure that they can exactly i think you know discover themselves that's true i think with with some services that are pretty much mainstream but i think with tremenko's holistic approach mm. it's more relatable and stuff like that so so it's not more it's not like a typical uh, assessment you're going to get or maybe just you're going to think oh it's just tick box exercises it's pretty much bespoke I feel like um, mm -hmm. so um, yeah w w that's why I'm wa I want to ask with a Gen Z focused how is how do they look at are you Gen Z? <laughs> I am yeah I'm 23 R right okay right, <laughs> right yeah so how, how would they look at self love because we, we described self love pretty much from the beginning but I don't know it, does that correlate with the Gen Z population or is it um think i think it does because i think in my experience obviously i'm kind of like on on the older scale of the generation right but i think the whole sort of self-love movement i'd say it came about like in the past like five years or so where it's it's like it seems like a really really new concept and it seems like it's really been pioneered by younger people to be like you know what i've had enough of this like i'm doing this for me i'm putting myself first i'm focusing on my like my well-being my like mental or physical like my spiritual my emotional my connections like mm -hmm. it's very much like this is what it means to me and i'm i am like the first person in my life and i get that first priority physical and physical and mental i understand because uh, the stigma around mental health is slowly breaking down mm -hmm. you know people people are being more open about talking uh, physical health has always been a thing and will continue to be. Mm. Uh, but spiritual, I might debate against that because a lot of people are moving away from that spiritual element. Some people are glued to it because of cultural elements. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think... With I think there's a difference between religion and spirituality, though. Mm -hmm. It depends how you would describe yeah. uh, each one. So, yeah. So, um, I want to piggyback off what Neve's saying. I 100% say think that Gen Z are leading the way for this self-love movement. And how that shows up with them mm -hmm. is the fearlessness. They're not mm. sticking to old paradigms about who or what they need to be. They're not, you need to go to university and study yeah, yeah. for how many years. Some of them are saying, I don't want to leave with 30 grand or 40 grand or 50 grand of debt. I'm going to make it happen. The fact that there are so many entrepreneurs now that are around, you know, the age of 25. I'm not working for anyone. I'll make my own job. Yep. The fact that they're using their creativity. I mean, if we think of, I can't remember his young name. I think he's Kari Barbie or something. The TikToker who lost his job in yeah, Italy. Yeah, yeah. During, the Italian guy. Yeah, the yeah. Italian guy during the pandemic. So he loses his job. I think he works in the factory. Um, he's an immigrant, um, very poor background. And he just uses a really, really simple model of taking the mickey out of 
other people on TikTok. And he is a millionaire now mm. within two years. That yeah. is fearless. That yeah, is, yeah, yeah. I don't care what anyone thinks of me. That is, I've lost my job, but I'm going to make it happen. Yeah. Yeah. That is self-love, mm. accepting self, accepting one's talents, not being afraid of what other people are going to think, not being afraid of what my parents or the older generation are going to say. Yeah, that's true. I get you. That yeah. is self-love. That is, yeah, that's true. Uh, but I would also argue the fact that your actions do have consequences as well. So you can be fearless, but not to, to a level where you're being stupid as well. Well, who decides because that? Your actions, your actions. If but you who go, makes if the you decision on, whether something's stupid or not? Who who makes that decision? You're so, you're responsible for your decisions. Yeah, but all right. So, what? Who decides whether something is stupid? Right. So I'll give you an example. Right. I was in so much mental pain in my last job. Right. Mm. That I decided to leave my job without a job. Mm -hmm. Now, mm. Mm -hmm. most people will say. You're stupid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why would you leave a job without a job? Now, they decided that it was stupid. I decided that it was my only option. And it's the best thing I've ever done. Mm. Yeah. So, was it stupid? Or was it the best thing I've ever done? Who decides? I think, I think see, I get what you're trying to say. Kind of like, not the... You know, like that that example of being like, okay, do you know what? I had to get out of the situation. I've got to do what's best for me. Yeah. It's completely different to a fearlessness where it's like, oh, do you know what I'm going to do today? I'm going to run on the train tracks. Yeah. Like, is that, is that <laughs> that's what I was referring well, to? Well, that's yeah. going to yeah, lead yeah, yeah, you yeah. to losing your life. Yeah, 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 yeah. that is stupid. So, so, so yeah. <laughs> it's trying to find that. That's like, what I was obviously, trying to Obviously, it's get like at, just yeah. situations where you're not going to put yourself in danger. Yeah, like, basically. Like there's fearlessness right. in thinking yeah. like, yeah. you know what, I, this... Or compromising your safety. Yeah, like this patriarchy. We're not talking about that type of fearlessness. You can technically put out TikToks mocking people. We know mocking isn't a good innate feeling. Like, we know it's wrong innately. Mm. If, if you're mocking someone for something that is, it's not our business or whatever it is, but we, we get views, we get entertainment for it. Like, for example, a lot of people make money from slander on the newspapers, <sighs> right? We, we might say it's not right, but the newspapers, might, the newspapers might have their own definition of what is good. No. They might say, you know what, it makes us money. <laughs> it makes us money, mm. right? So therefore it's good for the business, but someone else might say that is wrong. So we have definitions of what is good and what is wrong. Right. I think right? there's a bit of confusion here, right? So let me make, let me clarify what okay. I mean by fearlessness. Cool. I don't mean jump in front of a train. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't mean go actively go out and try and harm anyone, right? That's true, yeah. So yeah. what I mean by fearlessness is that we all have preconceived fears in our minds. Mm -hmm. I'm not good enough. I can't do this. This isn't going to work. Um, I'm not going to travel here because of this. Fearlessness is just stepping into elements that you're scared of doing. Mm -hmm. Okay. And right. just, just going through that uncomfortable feeling and seeing what's on the other side, like sitting at a table with people who are older than you that maybe speak differently to you. Right, yeah. And mm -hmm. saying, I'm not going there. I, 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 they're going to make me feel uncomfortable. No, I'm going to sit at that table mm -hmm. and you're going to hear me, warts and all. Yeah, yeah. Mm, yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. fearlessness. Yeah, I hear you. I not, hear you. not, you know, slandering someone yeah, yeah. on... on yeah. So that, I mean, that's just stupid. If, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. But, but yeah, that's so like, that's what I mean yeah. by fearlessness. Okay. That's the pride yeah. of Gen Z as well. Like, just sort of going out to all these, like, rallies and protests, mm. like, protecting our environment, protecting mm. people regardless of their sexuality or gender or their race or their religion. Like, it's... That's the fearlessness that, like, generations before, people are like, you can't do that. Like, why would you Absolutely. do that? People can't act like that. But now, like... I think in my generation, obviously there are still people that don't have that same outlook, but this whole, oh, Gen Z are so woke, they're snowflakes. Like, why are people, people are manipulating that fearlessness and that pride to make it seem like a bad thing just because as a generation, we're more accepting and we understand that, you know what, at the end of the day, your life is your life. What you're doing is not causing harm to anybody else. And we need to accept that and we need to mm. love people for whoever they that. are. Mm. And like, that's the things that when you look at, 
boomers and the older generations mm. and whatever they they call us snowflakes because we're fighting actively mm. for what we want and if you're causing me offense i'm gonna let you know that you're mm-hmm. causing offense oh we can't say anything because mm-hmm. you're being rude you're being racist on, you're them. being homophobic mm-hmm. that's it. you're being sexist mm-hmm. and you're being classist mm-hmm. that's what it is that's full like, that's right full stop period that like, that's exactly what it is yeah. and like i'm pr- i'm pr- call me a snowflake <laughs> call me a snowflake because i'm very very proud to be one I love and i'm that. very very proud of the people that i've got around me that make sure that we continue fighting this fight and that's our self-love as a community i love that's making that. sure that we've got each other's back and like yeah. making sure that we're all here for one another so that's yeah. powerful my people very, <laughs> very powerful, powerful. <laughs> gen, gen z they're not afraid to use their voice mm. and yeah. that's also self-love not being afraid to use my voice that's I mean, it. look at this podcast. Yeah, <laughs> this is a prime example. Gen Z all up in this room. Exactly. Like, this, is, this is why we're here. Like, this is the whole point that of it. That is yeah. a purpose, of yeah. course, 100% moving forward. That's all we're trying to do. <laughs> give, give a platform to people to voice their opinions mm. comfortably in a space that they enjoy. Yeah. So it's, um, we're, we're tired of, you know, falling into situations that we're not comfortable in yeah, or yeah. whatever. Um, but yeah, I think that is a good discussion around self-love. I've learned a lot, like, talking to you two, um, it's been refreshing okay. to find nice. out, you know, just how you perceive things, how we define certain things, mm-hmm. what is wrong, what is right. Mm-hmm. And it's just, uh, it's a journey, a non-stop journey. It mm-hmm. doesn't stop. Um, yeah, I think, I wonder what is to come ahead, you know? More self-love. Definitely. <laughs> Lessons yeah. have been learned. Lessons have been yeah. learned. No, I really enjoyed it as well. Thank you for having us, I think. Yeah. Anything you want to add before we wrap up? Any reminders or last messages you want to put in? Yeah, I think it's really important for everybody to recognise that there's only one of them in the whole world. They are unique Mm. being who is there to contribute something to this world. So wake up every day, look in the mirror, tell yourself how amazing you are. Even if you don't believe it, tell yourself that because that's how you will show up in the world. Beautiful. Done. That's it. You're done? Nothing more to say. You can't top that. You can't can't top top it. Can't top it. Well, thank you both for coming. Really appreciate it. And that is it for another episode of Powered By You. If you enjoyed what you watched and listened to, please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And you could also listen to the audio version on morleyradio.co.uk. Thank you. Thank you. you. See you.